As a moto vlogger, I'm always trying to figure out what is the best action camera to use when riding my motorcycle, and sometimes just action camera to use when I'm not riding the motorcycle. This video is sponsored by Cruiseman's Garage Honda Goldwing Maintenance Video Series. Hey everybody, welcome back to Cruise Man's Garage, and today I am going to be unboxing and testing and reviewing the Insta360 GO 3. Now, many of you know that I have the Insta360 X3 on my motorcycle. I've done several videos using the 360 degree uh, concept or video from that camera. And it's a very, very interesting. I, I have really enjoyed using it. But Insta360 sent me this Go 3 to test and review. This is a little different. Even though it says Insta360, that's the brand name, it is not a 360 degree camera. It's more like a traditional action camera, uh, but with a lot of unique features that kind of uh, separate it from, say, a GoPro Hero 12 or Hero 10 or whatever. And I've got a GoPro here to kind of compare it to. Okay, so let's open up the box and see what's inside. Before I do, I want to let you know that Insta360 is not sponsoring this video. They didn't pay me anything. No money changed hands. However, they did send me this Insta360 Go 3 to test and review. Okay, there it is. Very interesting. So this is actually the camera. Look how tiny it is. Oh, and it's ha, It's on a magnet, so it's sticking to that box with a little magnet because there is a magnet built in to the back of this Go 3. But there's more inside. Let's take a look. Okay, so rather than make you sit through the boring, uh, tedious part of me unboxing everything and figuring out what everything is, stumbling through it, I decided to do that on my own time and then just come back and show you what comes in the kit. Now that I've done a little research, I actually watched a couple of videos on the Insta360 app, which by the way are very well done. You will need your cell phone, your smartphone to activate this camera. So you will need to download the, I believe it's the Insta360, it's just the Insta360 app. Let's get started with what comes in. First, I'm going to talk about the documentation. You get this little uh, hard card user uh, guide, which gives you some of the very basic operations of the camera. There's also a little bit more extensive quick start guide, but it's mostly just photos. Uh, you get some really cool little stickers that you can uh, apply to whatever you like. First, we have the Go 3 camera itself. On its own, the Go 3 does have recording memory built in. There is no way to get inside this to change out an SD card or to change out a battery. It's all self-contained. Now, the Action Pod is a separate kind of a holder for this Go 3. The camera works on its own just like this. But to recharge the camera, you have to put it inside the action pod. And when you do, uh, right now it happens to be fully charged, but when you do, this light will change colors. And you'll have a little light here indicating that it is charging. Now the action pod is pretty cool. This kind of turns this into more of your traditional action camera. It's got a record button on top. It's got a power button on the side. It's got a quick menu button and it has a screen. So let's turn this on and you just basically press the power button on the side and that will turn the action pod 
and the camera. They're now on. They're not recording yet, but they do have power. And as you can see, uh, you can see everything that's on the back of this screen. Now, this screen is actually, I'd say it's the same size as the GoPro screen. It might not be quite as big as the GoPro screen, but I tell you, this Insta360 Go 3 screen is brighter, cleaner, crisper, but you know, it's just a matter of taste. When you look at this action pod, you can see that it's it becomes a pretty capable action camera. Now, what's cool about this screen is it's a touch screen, so you've got all kinds of capability. If you tap it once, it turns off all the information on the screen. There's all kinds of videos on YouTube explaining how you change these settings that go through all the menus. I don't see why I really need to get into that. The focus of my video is how is this camera going to be used for motovlogging? So it's a very, very nice action pod, but here's the best part of the action pod I haven't shown you yet. This screen can flip up. So now, see what I'm saying? Very, very cool. Okay, so now uh, this camera is recording. And I know it's recording because it's got a little red light flashing on the front. You can see there. And so if that red light's flashing, then it is now recording. So we will look at this when we get back to editing, and we'll see how this video, how it shows up, how it compares, everything. So uh, pretty cool. And I can stop recording by just pressing a second time. And what's really cool is because it has a flip-up screen, I can see... I can frame myself in the video. That's why I say this makes this a pretty compelling uh, option. It feels very solid. I will say it is plastic, but it feels like a very durable plastic. You get this clip mount, which is pretty darn cool, actually, because what it lets you do is you can mount this to your cap. You could mount it to a backpack strap. The camera just slips down in there. It is magnetic, as you can see, and it's in there pretty solid. It ain't coming out. Now, that's the coolest damn thing I've ever seen. Now, if I'm working on my motorcycle and I'm shooting a maintenance video, video or an installation video, how easy is it going to be for me to get POV shots? Yeah, I can have my tripod over here with my other camera or my smartphone, my iPhone shooting video of what I'm doing. But what if you want to see up close and personal what I'm actually doing? Well, I basically just come up here, turn it on. And because I have Quick Capture turned on, it's automatically recording what I'm doing. So if I want to come over here and do some work on my laptop uh, and show you what I'm doing, look at that. How cool is that? Maybe I want to show you all these different things that come in the kit. Just having that POV capability uh, is going to come in super, super handy for me. So now I can turn it off. And it gives me some little beeps to let me know it's turned off. And of course, you just take it out. It is, like I say, it's a pretty strong magnet. Okay, now the next thing they give you is this little magnetic pendant. And it even has a little graphic of the Insta360 Go on it so you know where to attach it. And basically what they've done is they, they store the... Uh, neck strap inside this little rubber seal. It's very cool the way they do it. Uh, you can adjust the length uh, by pulling on these two little rubber pieces here. So you basically slip this over your head and you get it to whatever height you want. Like that. Let's say like that. And then you put it inside your shirt. You take the Go 3 and yeah, it's got a magnet. And once again, it's on there. It ain't going anywhere. Another POV option, as opposed to the clip on the hat, what if I'm on the motorcycle 
and I want to record from, you know, of the dash or what's going on right in front of my chest, it couldn't be any easier. It's so simple. And right now I've got it set to shoot vertical video. Look over here at my computer and you're seeing my big light here for the studio. So now I'm shooting vertical video. Say I'm doing something for Instagram or YouTube shorts. I want to shoot vertical video or horizontal video. No problem. Just mount it like that. Now I'm shooting horizontal video. We have this other little base, which I think is kind of like a sticky mount, but there's a cover on here. You'll notice there's a one quarter twenty a threaded stud here, and then you have this pivot mount that goes with it. This little camera fits right down in that. You see the magnet? Grab it. But these little fingers on the side will lock it in place. So you just basically press it in like that. To remove it, you basically just press in on these little buttons on the side. There's a button on each side, and it releases it. So you think, well, what would I use this for? Well, there's a one quarter twenty female thread on the bottom of this mount. And it will fit on any standard tripod or they give you this base you can mount it to, which I will screw it in here. And when you take off this little plastic cover, it's got this adhesive a sticky surface that if you want to stick it to a flat surface like the hood of your car, I'd be very careful with that. Or a windshield, I'd be very careful with that. Uh, if it's on the inside of your car, I don't think it's a problem. I don't know how I don't know how secure this is on the outside of a car, but it's pretty darn sticky. And it says if you leave it on for 30 minutes, it, it gets maximum adhesion. And but you can remove it. So, because they say you can reuse this by rinsing this under cold water. And there's a video on their website that shows all this. But you can also use it just with this little base. So I could set this on my desk and look at this. This thing pivots and you can rotate it so I can turn the camera at any angle. And think about that. If I'm shooting something on my desk, I can use it like a little dolly. I just slide it on my desk and I can get some pretty interesting video. If you already have a lot of GoPro mounts, the standard two prong mounts that you're using for motor vlogging or for your other action camera, uh, Insta360 does. It is an option. You don't get this in the standard kit, but they do make a mount that works with those two prong systems. It's got the little finger attachments built in. Look at that. They thought of, I mean, I'm, I'm not kidding. They've thought of everything. They really have thought of everything. They also have a one quarter 20 thread on the bottom of this. So I would highly recommend anybody purchases this to buy this uh, quick release mount. So now I can, I've already got a GoPro mount on my uh, HJC helmet. So now once I have the camera with this mount attached to the back, guess what? I've got my little fingers so I can attach it to any GoPro mount or I can fold those down. I just throw it on my quarter 20 and there is, let's say I need to get underneath the bottom of my motorcycle. I need it really, really low. Guess what? There it is right there. The mounting options are what really make this Insta360 Go so appealing to a motovlogger. Let's get out to the garage. In my first motovlog test, I have the Go 3 mounted to my HJC helmet using the accessory mount. With the action pod mounted on my handlebars, I can see what I'm viewing through the Go 3 camera and I can control all of the functions. I can start and stop recording. I can basically do anything remotely. It's very cool. Because I'm recording this scene in the free frame video, uh, I do have horizon lock as well as stabilization. I currently have it set to high, and I think it's doing a pretty good job of stabilizing the video. I'm also recording in the flat color profile, and I did do a little bit of color correction on the video, 
in Final Cut Pro. Next, I flip the action pod around facing me and put the Go 3 into the action pod. I flipped up the little view screen and now I can see everything that's going on. I can frame my video. It's hard to see with the backlit sun there, but I could see it just fine from where I'm sitting. And now it's getting video looking back at me and I think this video actually comes out pretty darn good. It does have the horizon lock because I'm shooting in freeform video. You also may notice that little thing sticking out off my right arm. That's another mount that I'm going to use for the next scene where I'll put the Go 3 in there and I'll still be able to monitor what's going on through the action pod mounted on the handlebar. I would have to say one of the best features of this Go 3 is it's so small and so lightweight and with that magnetic mount you can put it just about anywhere on your motorcycle. Here I've got it on that selfie stick that's sticking out from the passenger grab rail but you basically are only limited to your imagination as to what kind of creative shots you can get with this Go 3. In this test, I put the Go 3 inside the action pod and mounted it to my helmet just like you would a traditional action camera, as you can see there in the mirror. Now, what you gain from this is additional battery life. I can record up to 175 minutes with the Go 3 in the action pod, but what you lose is the ability to monitor what you're recording. I much prefer having the action pod mounted to my handlebar so that I can see the screen and control the functionality of the camera from the action pod screen. I did discover that the action pod screen is not glove friendly. I can't get it to respond at all. So you do have to use your fingertips or you'd have to have gloves that are designed to work with touch screens. You'll also notice the video is quite a bit noisier. Here I'm shooting using the freeform video mode and you might get a little bit cleaner video if you're shooting in the regular video mode with 2.7K. But remember, this camera has an extremely small sensor and that really does hinder low light performance. But that's just not the strong suit of this camera. It has many other capabilities that no other camera I've used has. I can't emphasize enough how great it is having that screen on the action pod that can be flipped up so that you can remotely monitor what you're recording from a distance. Now here I'm recording with the action pod and I can see myself in the video, but I can also set the action pod anywhere near me while I'm recording using the Go 3 handheld. So when I'm in intricate places, I can look on that remote monitor and see what I'm recording. That is a very powerful feature. Okay, so now it's time for me to give you my final assessment and review of the Insta360 GO 3. I've been using this camera now for a couple of weeks in a variety of different uh, situations. I did use it uh, on the cap uh, to film some POV when we were installing this mini split air conditioner. Comes in really handy like if I'm going up and down stairs. No way I could hold a camera and do that in film and go up and downstairs at the same time because I need both my hands. It came in really handy in that situation. I would like to point out that this camera is available in three different configurations, 32, 64, or 128 gigabytes. I looked online and the price difference between 32 and 64 is like 20 bucks or less. So whatever you do, don't get the 32 gigabyte. Go ahead and at least get the 64 gigabyte. So if you're recording in video mode, regular video mode, 2.7K at 24 frames per second, you'll have over two hours and 53 minutes of record time or somewhere thereabouts. And if you're recording using their free frame video, which I kind of recommend in a lot of different situations, you still have over an hour and a half, I think, of recording time. Now, as far as the battery life, the battery life of this little unit on its own without the action pod is about 45 minutes. If you're using the camera inside the action pod, 
it has an additional battery and you can record up to 175 minutes. Now you'll notice when I put that into the action pod, this red light comes on. And that's because the action pod will automatically start charging the little Go 3 whenever it's put into the action pod. And of course you can recharge the battery on the action pod by plugging it into a USB-C port and they can charge simultaneously. One decision you have to make when you're using this camera is do I want to use this inside the action pod or on its own? And of course recording time might be one consideration. But another consideration is by itself this camera is waterproof down to five meters. The action pod is not waterproof. They say it's kind of splash proof, but it's got an open USB-C port on the side. So if it's raining, I wouldn't use it. If you're needing to use it in wet conditions, you can use this little camera on its own. Now, one of the things I really loved about this camera is how many flexible mounting options you have. And probably the best thing is the way it uses the magnet mounting system. Guys, this does not come in the kit. It's the accessory mount. I would highly advise getting it. It's not expensive. And it gives you the little GoPro mounting fingers or a one quarter 20 mount so you can mount it on a tripod like I have this mounted here. So what about image stabilization? Well, you have four different choices for image stabilization. And I never got I never got to the ultra or the highest setting. I only used high for the motovlog, and it seemed to do a pretty good job. The only caveat with stabilization that I've seen is if you're using the monitor on the action pod, like if you're vlogging and you have stabilization turned on, uh, you will get some lag or delay in the image on the screen. Another feature of the Go 3 that I really didn't test because I never use it on any action camera and that is the voice commands. But it does have the ability for you to tell it to start and stop recording. So let's talk a little bit about free frame video versus standard video. Standard video is like any action camera would record. Uh, you basically import it into your computer, you take it into your editing software and you can do whatever you want. You set your aspect ratio in the camera before you start shooting, and that's what you get out. Free frame video is rather interesting, but it does require the use of the Insta360 app either on your phone or on the computer. I use the one on the computer because I like working on a large monitor. But basically what free frame video does is it records the entire image on the sensor itself. You can then, in post, in the Insta360 app, you can decide if you want it to be linear or uh, action or ultra-wide. You can set that in the app. Very, very clever the way they did that. Uh, and you can also move the image around. You can recenter things. You can then decide, do you want 16 by 9? Do you want a square uh, output? Do you want 9 by 16 if you're shooting vertical video? So you only have to shoot the video once. There are limitations, though. If you're using free frame video, you can only shoot up to 14.4K video. So that is a limitation of the free frame. In regular video mode, you can shoot up to 2.7K, which is much better. That does give you a little leeway. If you're producing and outputting 1080p video, you do still have some room to do some cropping. But for motovlogging, especially if you're outdoors, I don't think you're going to notice the difference. I think really the advantages that come from free frame probably outweigh the disadvantages. The other advantage for motovloggers if you're shooting in free frame is you get horizon lock. So it will lock that horizon when you're going around turns and things like that. You can't do that with their regular video mode. That's just one of the limitations. So for me personally, during my testing, I tended to always use the free frame video for mode vlogging. So who is this camera a good fit for? I've been trying to decide 
it's a perfect fit for somebody like me because I can see a lot of different applications where I'll use it. I'll not only use it for cruise man's garage videos, for the maintenance videos, where I need to get into tight spaces and shoot video. There's a trade-off between the quality of the video and the flexibility of all the different mounting options, the flip-up screen, the magnetic mounting. I think if you're a casual motovlogger and you're looking for a primary motovlogging camera, this might be a very good choice. It's very affordable. It'll give you good video. You know, if, if you're doing this as your business like I am, I would not use this as my primary camera, but I will certainly use it as a secondary camera. I was very impressed with the video that I got from motovlogging yesterday. Where this camera kind of lets you down is in low light situations. And that's to be expected because it's a very, very small sensor. Obviously, it has to fit inside that little body. Anytime you have a small sensor, you just can't capture as much light. You'll get a lot of noise in dark situations, especially indoors. This is a camera that's really meant to be used outdoors or in a studio where you have plenty of light like we have right now. We have some pretty good lighting in here. But for moto vloggers, that's not really an issue. Most of your filming is done outdoors in sunshine or in daylight. You're going to get some pretty good images out of this camera. Now, I want to reiterate again that even though Insta360 did not sponsor the video, they're not paying me to make this video, uh, but they did send me this Go 3 to test and review, and I'm going to continue to test it and review it, and I may do a long-term review in the future because I'm already thinking of more creative ways I can mount this and get some very unique uh, shots on a motorcycle. Unfortunately, the Honda Goldwing doesn't have very many good places <laughs> to mount the camera like you would have on say an adventure bike where you've got crash bars you got all kinds of places to mount things uh, as far as sound quality i would say for a small camera like this it's pretty good it's if you're vlogging with it as long as you're not outdoors in the wind it does not really have any way to protect the microphones from wind I suppose you could rig up some little sticky foam things to maybe block some of that wind noise. I'm sure somebody will come up with a way to do that. But that was the only time I had an issue with the sound quality. Now, I've been so impressed with the Insta360 X3, the 360-degree camera that I use on my Goldwing, and this Go 3. And I also have another Insta360 camera in my studio that I use for overhead shots. You know, I've just been so impressed with their technology. I've become an affiliate with Insta360. So if you're interested in the Go 3 or any of the Insta360 products, I'll put links in the description of this video and that helps support the channel. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, give it a thumbs up because that really helps my YouTube rankings. And remember what I always say, ride often, but ride safe.